All right, guys, uh, today we're gonna be restoring a carbon fiber hood for the EP3. Uh, when I was buying the engine for the EF, which is under the tarp right now, uh, the donor car had like a carbon fiber hood on it. It was painted over black. It was in, it's in pretty rough shape, I'll show you it. And today I'm gonna be restoring it. I'm gonna be putting hood pins in it and some vents. So here's the hood. Currently it's wet because I washed it. Uh, you see it's scuffed up here. I had the uh, round hood pins things. I don't really like that. I'm gonna go with the more like oval shape like that. Over here has a bit of a nick. Nothing too bad. I think I can sand it out. Uh, same thing with over here. So if I'm not able to get this thing to a glossy carbon fiber look, I'll probably paint over it with color matching paint to the EP3. And yeah, so what we're first gonna do now is we're gonna sand it down with 220 grit with the DA sander. And yep, forgive me for the sound in the background, but uh, I also installed last night some Type R uh, JDM taillights for the EP3, so here they are. So, as I said, we're gonna be using 220 grit on a DA sander, orbital sander. So while doing this, you might be scared to do it because it's going to be going from black to a dull finish. But once you get through, so this is a paint layer and then this is the carbon fiber layer. You can clearly tell that there's a difference. So the people who actually painted this, they use primer, which is cool. It's not everybody uses primer, but so this is carbon fiber. Primer is the white, then that's the black paint. Now, if you get a Lithuanian man to spit on your hood, it will become glossy carbon fiber. Exactly. Are you not going to demonstrate here him <laughs> on this, as you see? And boom, you get nice carbon fiber. <laughs> so go to your imports and exports and uh, find a Lithuanian man. <laughs> So we've been at this for what? How long you'd say? Oh shit, an hour at least. <laughs> yeah, an hour at least. Uh, we got a little bit of this edges to do still, this side as well. And we got a little bit back here in the center part. And then the 220 grit sanding is done. Once we're done sanding with 220 grit, we're gonna then take the hood pins. Uh, so we're not gonna actually install the hood pins the correct way. The correct way is you should install the hood and install a pin to the car, and then you should have to figure out where the pin goes and you drill a hole. In this case, the hole's drilled in with EP3s. They're generally in the same spot right here. We're just gonna take the template, we're gonna cut out a place to uh, put the, the hood latches. So it'll be something like that. We're also going to take the hood vents and we're gonna install those here, which is gonna involve 
cutting the hood. So we're gonna get all the holes cut out. Then we're gonna go back, we're gonna hit it with like 320, 400, and then we're gonna finish it with 600, paint it, install it, all the, uh, the hood pins and the vents. So, moving on with the grit, we'll start sanding some more. Well, first we're gonna cut it up. All right, so we're currently working on uh, stenciling out where we have to cut. We made this little stencil, it came in the box. We literally just cut the box apart for the stencil and we positioned this in a way so that it is, well, this line right here is flush with the body line of the car right there. And also the pin is perfectly positioned to the existing hole in the hood. And this is what we're going off of. So now that this one's already taped up, oh, I'm gonna take a little marker. I'm just gonna, you don't have to do this much tape. Just no, so you know, we're gonna do this much tape with- We're gonna uh, do this. And then we're gonna take a jigsaw and we're gonna try and cut this out. Don't forget, you also need to cut out the bottom part so that this thing can sit down and you can put bolts through. So the top part is probably gonna be jigsaw. Down here, we're gonna probably use a, angle grinder slash dremel or something so yeah all right remember guys whenever you're working with carbon fiber to wear a respirator this stuff is pretty nasty like the dust particles and everything when it gets into your lungs so safety number one priority well not really because we should have been wearing masks while sanding it but a little ball garage right so right now i got this ryobi jigsaw I'm gonna slowly go around Hopefully it's long enough to do both pieces, the other side as well, and the top side. So let's see how it goes. Can you hold this? I'm holding it. Okay. It's fucking hot as hell. Yeah. We'll just take everything off. Nice, it cut through all the way. Cut now through we'll all the still way. have to probably cut more on the outside just so that we can get uh, access to bolts and nuts. So let's see how this fits. Mint. That's perfect. Actually, mint. Yeah, how the fuck? <laughs> so having the stencil there actually helped you, right? Keep you in line and shit as you're yeah, going for forward? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, it was easier to see. Yeah. So. so, same process for the other side. We won't show you that because it's a little repetitive. 
Yeah, unless we do some cinematic, but most likely not. All right. Yep. Uh, we'll see you once I get both sides cut out. All right, so the stencils for these are also pretty simple. I got a bolt that is the exact edge for where we need this to sink in. Don't judge us too much by using a rustic bowl. It's literally just the perfect size. Yeah. So we had this mocked up right here to how we liked it how we wanted it right yeah and then we made sure it's even on both sides by taking a measuring and we are using this body line as well as this right here so we see here boom it's like three inches three inches and we basically sat it made sure over here was i think it was seven and a half no it was seven on the inside right there uh, same thing on the other side yep. we measured it a million times it's even we stenciled it out with pencil at first we took this off we then put tape over it so that it's a lot easier to see so now we know with the cut on this line right here and this line also accounts for the thickness here so that this lip can sit on here you don't want to cut out a step you don't want to cut it out so it's like this because this is just going to fall in there it's not going to sit on anything exactly so, yeah so more cutting now but first we can't just simply get a jigsaw because there's no hole so what we're going to do we're going to just take a drill we're simply just going to drill like maybe drill here and a drill here now normally what a lot of people do is they'll drill each out each corner so they'll drill it's because the uh the bit is circular so we do a nice circular edge. For me, I think that's just too much work. I'm just gonna drill a hole here, I'm gonna drill a hole here, and I'll do all the rest with the jigsaw. Yep. All right, so we'll get to that. All right, now I'm gonna I drill that out. Jigsaw action, so now let's get everything off of here. Yep. Did I make it just enough? to go back around with uh, Dremel or angle grinders to clean it up, but let's see how's it going. Is that the right one? So yep. It's a tight fit. Yeah, we're going to have to go back around a little more. in there that's nice oh my gosh it's gonna be so aggressive Just hell get, yeah uh, epoxy it in there or something yeah we'll see because uh now i did order off ebay right of course ebay is ebay and uh it's supposed to be carbon but instead it's Hydro dipped uh, 7D carbon. Yeah, dude, it's seventh fucking dimension. Carbon, yeah. Imagine doing a septuple integral right there. So uh, we'll see how it looks on a, we'll see if fake carbon is allowed on a real carbon hood, but it might be a little too cringe, so we're probably gonna paint this like a matte or whatever to match the hood pins. But if it looks good like this, then I'll leave it like this. We'll see. Yeah, you could say that it's hydro dip just off of these marks right here and the more obvious giveaway is how it stretches how as it further well. down you go yeah, yeah so this looks like regular carbon weave and then over here it stretches so you can tell it's hard it's hydro, eh, hydro dipped but poorly i mean carbon also stretches like when you're doing it because it goes from smaller weave to thicker weave not but... like this boy this shit actually looks seven dimensional look at that yeah. <laughs> all right well 
Time to do the other side. This time I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do over the blue kind of so I don't have to keep grinding it with this. We're sure gonna grind it just to clean it up. All right, so the vents are cut out. We're just hitting it right now. We hit it with 320, 400, and now we're hitting it with the 600. Uh, yeah, we're gonna smooth in all the edges. We're then gonna flip it over once we're done with this and enlarge this side of the hole, but on the other side so that we can get in some bolts around it. But so far, so good. All right, so give a little nice wet sand and it's looking really good. Yeah, you, there's a uh, salt on this side if you want to show them this. So next step is just going to get it dry, as clean as possible, and uh, yeah. clear coat. Well, no, we got to still figure out the uh, bolts for this guy, getting the bolts in. Yep. But, yeah, this is not that bad. So, familiar sight, huh? Yeah, we're back. Just for uh, a few hours, but... Owner was kind enough to let us spray it. As you see, she's uh, not using it currently, so... We're lucky that we can spray this in here so that we can get a better finish because there's nothing that's going to fly in here it's going to be just consistent we're going to let it dry a little bit more got it currently set up yeah and yeah hopefully it's not like dirty probably it's just sanding more stuff here but when we put water on it it looks good so if theoretically we put a clear coat on it it should also look good oh yeah we're just gonna let it dry hopefully the water marks go away and uh should be mint and meanwhile, I still have all my EF parts up here as well. <laughs> she was kind enough to let me use the storage, so... Alright. Time lapse. <laughs> fish eyeing almost and like right here so it was over here it's as well almost and it, gone. it got rid of it and over here there's just a couple more you can, you could you feel can the run. barely see it you can feel it so we'll get all that knocked out I think there's over here was the run and it's already out so yeah we're gonna wet sand it till it's completely smooth and we'll polish it and it should be a perfect like mirror finish all right guys so the hood is wet sanded again after clear coating it hopefully all the imperfections are gone uh, we wet sanded it for 600 for the main rough parts that we had to then we switched to a thousand or I think it was 1500 and then just we finished this off really quickly with a 3000 grit so over here I have the polisher I'm gonna be using it's a griot and I'm gonna be using Meguiar the heaviest cut they have 105 and I got a bag of uh, polishing pads you use 105? yeah 105 I have a bunch of it so why not do we have a finishing compound or do we not need it? Nah, we'll see how it looks. Yeah. And when it comes to installing the vents, hopefully JB weld will work. Hopefully, yeah, right there, JB weld. And of course, we're just gonna bolt the hood pins back on. And the finish is done. So now you gotta get the vents in. Let me use the epoxy. The hatches. Hood clips, latches, whatever you wanna call them. Probably not gonna have time to do the pin today because we're probably gonna go to a car meet in a bit. But yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So I got the hood temporarily mounted in. It's not completely mounted in yet because I don't have the hood pins installed. It's currently just zip tied down. I need to cut the latch out as well, just because the latch is no good with carbon fiber hoods. Uh, if you do rely on the on the hatch like latching mechanism, you will get cracks here, just because it's like almost impossible to close on EP3s. 
that's why you use these hood pins. Now, one thing I would do differently next time when it comes to installing these vents is uh, I used a like one minute epoxy thing and there was just not enough time to like get the epoxy all the way around and uh, install it. This one's fine because I had a mod that told me, so I did one side, he did the other, we did it really quickly, we threw it on here. This was the second one we did. The first one we did was right over here. And the epoxy started to settle and it didn't have enough time to like bond with the carbon fibers. As you see, it's like lifting off. Now, what I'm gonna do to fix that, obviously, not right now just because going to the car meet, like I said earlier, but uh, I'm gonna take some rivets, I'm gonna rivet here, I'm gonna rivet here, I'm just gonna rivet like a couple, like every say like three inches or so and I think it'll still look good. Now, there's also a few parts, like over here, I need to uh, expand more of the hole on the other side so I can get a socket there, maybe even pliers, just because the tolerance is on this is really crazy, but I think it looks crazy. It really changes how aggressive this car is. You guys are gonna be seeing my EP3 a lot more on the channel. I have a lot more plans to do, I have uh, complete like suspension rebuild. We're going to be putting extended ball joints. We're going to put a putting uh, the steering rack slider inverse tie rods and a bunch of other stuff We're also going to uh, Repaint the bumper and the lip, but when we repaint the lump bumper, we're gonna delete these we're gonna fiberglass over it So it's gonna look more like a JDM car but, Yeah, for now, this is how she looks All right guys, I'm filming on my phone, so I'm not sure if the quality is gonna be good. Uh, but I reinstalled the hood vent. I just took it off, put some more epoxy on it, and now it's installed nicely. It's a little dark right now, so you can't see it, but it does look really good. It makes the car really aggressive, kind of as if like something needs to be added over here as well, but we'll see. Right now it's just a Type R body kit with that. The hood pins are also attached. Now, I'm, I didn't record this because I didn't really install these properly. Normally, for installing hood pins, you want to first install the pin on the car. Then you want to just uh, put like toothpaste or some sort of paint on top of the pin. Put your hood down, see where it marks it, drill out the hole, and then put the hood latch. I did mine backwards. I put the hood latch first just because I knew there's already a hole right there for the EP3. And, yeah, I just didn't want to misinform people to do it my way because it's not the proper way to do it. But once you have it all figured out, it's really just going back and forth and making sure that it's all adjusted properly. So as you see, the uh, hood pins all work and it should open up nicely. And there you go. It's the hood pin. I did cut the rubber to make it shorter. There is a factory hole right there so I didn't have to drill anything to install these. I did cut out the uh, latching portion of the carbon fiber hood. The reason why is because, especially on the EP3s, I've been looking around for used ones and all of them will have cracks right here and that's because of the latch and the, how hard you have to slam this hood to uh, close it. So in order to make sure I don't crack it, I just went straight hood pins and I'm happy with it.